Praise the Lord. Daddy, good morning. Good morning, sir. Okay. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we well, thank you, Lord, for today. Uh, this is the first Sunday of the month of uh, September. Uh, a month or a group of months that we generally call, especially in Nigeria, the Ember months. And we generally know sometimes, unfortunately, for the most dangerous months uh, of the year. So I'd like to start this Ember month uh, with a prayer from Psalm 24, uh, which I want to personalize for the members of Holy Wings. He says, if it does Psalm 124 is a short group, one to, uh, one to eight, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Ili Wing say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quickly when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us, this our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to death teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. We thank you because if it had not been for the Lord, we, the members of Ely Wings Chapel of Faith, we would not have made it from January up to September 2022. I we thank you for it, Lord. We bless your name for it, Lord. For if it had not been for, your, for you, our Father, our God, if it had not been for the Lord, we would have received no nourishment, no protection, no grace, no favor. But it is because of you, Lord. I will say thank you, Lord. We come here, Father Lord, to say thank you unto you because we are indeed a people who have received. Even though we have come to say we want more, Lord, but we're indeed recognize that if it had not been for you, Lord, we would be nowhere, Lord. And we thank you. We thank you because we know, Lord, you that you have started this good work in us, you'll be faithful to complete it. We declare that, Lord, between now and the end of this year, 2022, we shall lose no one in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare now, between now and the end of 2022, Lord Almighty, we shall all flourish in the mighty name of Jesus. Even if a thousand should fall at our side, 10,000 on our right hand, Father Lord, it shall not come near any single one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that indeed, even in these turbulent times, we shall flourish and your grace shall be upon us. Your peace shall be upon us. Your protection shall be upon us. We declare that Lord Almighty, we shall live, Father Lord, like kings unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. For if it had not been for the Lord, we recognize that, Lord, you alone have done everything for each and every single member of this fellowship. Not just us, but our loved ones, Lord. And we say, thank you, Lord. And we say, Lord, continue to do that which only you alone can do. Continue to bless us and protect us like only you alone can do. We lift up today's service before you. We say, Lord Almighty, come down. Come down and shatter like a hammer. Come down, Lord, and do, Father, Lord, what you alone can do and have kept specially for each and every single one of us, Lord. We declare, Lord, God, Lord, today, Lord, you will gift us with your Holy Spirit in a way that we have never felt it before. For each and every single soul, spirit that is here, we say, Lord, give us a parcel that contains you as our early gift for this year in the name of Jesus. We declare, Lord, that it is well with us. We declare that, Lord Almighty, it shall continue to be well well with us. We say, Lord, speak through each and every single verse that I'll speak today and let your word make it change, make changes in the life of each and every single one of us, even today, even on to the end of this year and even beyond. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. Blessed be your holy name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord, who is on our side? The title of my message this morning is a question. And uh, I, I really, I need to go back and tell you the, some of the antecedents of the message. But the question of my message, Ladi just answered it. I didn't speak to him before. Uh, the title of my message is, is the Lord on our side? And then he starts by reading a psalm that said, if it had not been for the Lord, who is present continuous 
on our side. And so I know <laughs> I was laughing when he was reading it. I said, God has answered the question. He's on our side. Uh, but nevertheless, I will continue with my message. Let me give you the antecedents of this message. Uh, these days, God has been delaying giving me a message. And um, this delay went on until this morning. And this morning, <clears throat> when I now understood what he wanted me to talk about, I said, okay, let me put some things in my computer. The computer is not working. You will notice <clears throat> all the confusion that came with the music, this is because I can't use the cursor. I think there must be some virus or something. Um, I can't write anything in the in the system. So uh, he has neutralized all of that for a reason, you know. But then, <laughs> is it not God that is going to be behind this message? If it is God that is telling me to talk about. To ask the question, is the Lord on our side? Why then? Why is it that I cannot use my system? Why is it that I cannot use Microsoft Word? Because the, the, the cursor will never go where I want it to go. It just keeps going. You know, GD might be better able to under to, to explain this to me. It just, just keeps going all over the, I think there must be some virus or something in the system. So I've come to give a message that God has answered, but I nevertheless, I will still give what <laughs> he has laid on my mind because um, I have always assumed that God is on my side. I have always known that God is on my side. I started with the word assume, but I have been shocked at different times of my relationship with him to discover that he's not on my side. That in certain situations and circumstances, he is on somebody else's side and not mine. And uh, this has created great distress for me until I came to a better understanding of why the God who is on my side sometimes take sides with someone else against me. I've described this before that there are two children in a family and, uh, and you have a quarrel with your sibling and the mother says, why are you quarreling with my son? And you sort of say, what do you mean? I mean, you know, if he's your son, what am I? At that particular time, you're not mama's son. Because as far as Mama is concerned, the other person is her son, not you. And you need to determine and decide why you are not on our side, how you can be on our side, how you can remain on our side, because really, we don't want to leave the Lord's side, according to the psalm that, that, uh, that Ladi has just used by inspiration, that read by inspiration. If the Lord is on our side, we don't have to worry about anything. But if he is not, <laughs> we need to be bothered. Uh, we need to return to him. We need to get close to him. We need to make sure that the Lord is on our side. Because the initiative comes from him. We might always think we are on his side, but you know he might not be on our side. Uh, might not be on our side. I mean, there's a, a time came in the life of Samson that he thought the Lord was with, still with him, but the Lord had left. <laughs> the Lord was no longer there. And he thought he could do as he was doing before, you know, and God had left him. So let us look at the scripture. I hope uh, I'm going to be using my hand to open this. Thing. Yeah, okay. Let us look at the scripture that I want to use for this message. It's taken from... Uh, Judges chapter 6, verse 11. 
Judges 6, 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebrine tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the Abia's right. While his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Let me, let me say something at this juncture. Whenever you read the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, no, it is Jesus. I don't know whether we have spent time doing that. If we haven't, I will, I will take it in one of these midweeks. Anytime you hear the angel of the Lord, it is not an angel, it is Jesus. Gideon said to him, oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? I mean, if, we, if, if the Lord is really with us, why are we being oppressed by the Midianites? Why am I hiding in the wine press to trash corn, to trash wheat? Why? Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go, in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Let's stop there for a minute. He started by saying in verse 11, the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebrine tree. By verse 14, it's no longer the angel of the Lord, it is the Lord. Huh? Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, My Lord, oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Then he said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who will who talk to me. Do not depart from here, I pray, until I come and bring you an offering and said it before you. And he said, I will wait until you come back. Let's stop there. Uh, because what, what Gideon goes to do is that he goes to cook a meal and he wants God to eat the meal, <laughs> you know. And the angel puts his hand on the meal and the meal disappears. Anyway, uh, let's understand what I want to bring up here, because you know, say, is God on our side? You, you can you can tell certain things from this service. Okay, number one, first thing you can tell is that God is on my side. Why? Because He gave me a message, and when He gave me a message, Ladi confirmed it. So the second thing you can you can confirm is that God is on Ladi's side, because He didn't know. What I was going to what I was going to say, but then God used has used both of us now. Thirdly, because for that very reason that He gave me a message for us, and that He used Ladi to confirm the message, we get to number three. God is on the side of Healing Wings Chapel of Faith. In which case, if you are here this morning, God is on your side. So the essence of my message to you this morning is how to retain God in your sight. And I will, to the limits of what I have learned from God, because I'm, I'm just going to be giving testimony, that which I have learned experientially from him, uh, I will tell you why he is on your side, which should tell us how to make sure he continues to remain on our side. He never leaves anyway. He never forsakes anyway. But there's a manifest presence of God 
and we've already seen it this service. And you know, I mean, <laughs> remember something else because this is a time of healing. As Ladi said, there's the first service in the month of September, a, a service that we have appointed for 28 years. We have an appointment with God that we will come the first Sunday of every month and he will do a medical checkup on us. And he will heal our infirmities. And he will strengthen our bones. He will cleanse our blood. He will give us strength from within. So, the first contradiction that we find in God is that it's usually assumed that the man that is on top, the man that is a winner, the man that is wealthy, the man that is strong, it is because God is on his side. But those contradictions don't follow in the kingdom of God because those are the assumptions of men. So, you have an equation. The Israelites, they are slaves in Egypt. They are being oppressed. All kinds of persecution is happening to them. If you were to look from the outside, the obvious conclusion is that God is not on the side of the Israelites. But no. He is on their side, even though they are being oppressed. And so immediately we find an equation. God is never on the side of the strong. He is always on the side of the weak. Never, ever, ever which the hasty conclusion that because somebody is stronger, is more powerful, he is richer, he has more connections, that that gives the person an advantage. No, 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 no. The person who has the advantage is the person who is disadvantaged because that disadvantage creates room for God. That disadvantage provides a reliance for God. So God is always looking for people who are disadvantaged, always looking for people who are weak, always looking for people who are oppressed. And as we will find this morning, he's always on the lookout for the sick. Because as we said last week, when we are afflicted, God is afflicted. The Bible says he was wounded for us. So he understands our pain. And by his wounds, we are healed. So although the Israelites were the down and out in Egypt, they were actually the ones that were up with God, but they didn't know that. Uh, they didn't know that, but they came to know that by the time the the horsemen of, of, of Egypt were at the bottom of the Red Sea and they had walked through on dry land, they knew that, wait a minute, the experience we had in Egypt was deceptive. And so we have this case of Gideon. Gideon his people are being oppressed by the Midianites. He can't even thresh wheat where everybody can see him because the Midianites will come and just say, give me the wheat that you are threshing. 
He is stretching it in the wine press so that nobody will see him. And then an angel of the Lord, Jesus, the, the, the pre-incarnate Jesus, appears to him, and he refers to him in his contradiction. He calls him a mighty man of valor, and you don't say, who are you talking about? Who, how, who, who, who are you referring to? And he is referring to Gideon. And Gideon started to manipulate, to navigate in this contradiction that, you know, how can I be a mighty man of valor? Look at all these things that is happening to us. Look at where I'm hiding here. Look at, you know, and he said, it is in that weakness of yours that you are going to defeat the Midianites. He said, go in that strength of yours. And if you like, call it, go in your lack of strength. And in your lack of strength, you will defeat the Midianites. And while, you know, Gideon is still arguing that, look, you know, I mean, you know, my, my tribe is the least, in the, uh, the least in my father's house, my tribe is the least in Israel, etc. you know. Then Jesus tells him again, says, you are going to defeat the Midianites as one man. That means even only you can defeat the Midianites. And so in terms of just bringing out that thesis to him, when it became time to gather the army, God told him, there are too many, there are too many, there are too many. And he reduces the army to a size that makes it foolhardy. Uh, he reduces the army to the extent that the only way, the only reason why you would, you would join the people going in the army is if you have faith in God. Because otherwise, this is a suicide squad. Are you going to pay take 200 people to go and fight the Midianites when your whole army could not fight them before? Uh, but God gave him victory with his few people. God gave him victory. Uh, so I want to, to see if I can navigate through some of these and present uh, the one or two things that I have learned personally from this. You see, we move from Gideon to the time of David. The Philistines were oppressing the Israelites. And the time came, they came out with an army. When they came out of this army, then they changed the equation, they brought out a giant. And they said, you know, rather than have us killing ourselves, uh, just bring out one person to fight one person from Philistine. Whoever wins, the other one will become the slaves. All, all the other ones will become the slaves of that one. And the Israelites, knew that there's no way we can fight this man. There's, you know, I mean, the Bible talks about how tall he is. I've got, I've got so many estimates, say what, about six foot nine inches that, you know, even the, he, 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 his, 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 uh, his spear, somebody has to carry it for him because it was so heavy. He was, he was all built, all, you know, armor was everywhere. He was, you know, and for 40 days, This man terrorized Israel and abused them and shamed them because they couldn't get a volunteer to fight him. Now, this was the same Israel that said, give us a king uh, so that we'll be like other people. Give us a king so that he will fight for us. But the king that they gave them was also a tall man. In fact, there was nobody as tall as Saul in Israel. 
But this king never volunteered to fight Goliath. Until one ragamuffin, one little boy called David, who was not even in the army. He was just sent on an errand to bring some provision to his brothers. And when he came there, he was surprised at this man that was just from fooling Israel. What is the meaning of this? And he said, and they told him that, look, the king has given the promise that anybody who fights this man uh, and is able to prevail over him, he will never pay taxes again in his life. He will marry the king's daughter. And they will say, huh? because of this uncircumcised Philistine, said he's going to fight him. <laughs> you know, and this is where the story takes a turn that is just ridiculous. Okay? And you, 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 you can tell that either it's a parable or it is just a conspiracy of God. Because if the fight between the representative of Israel and the representative of Philistine is going to determine who is, who is, who, who is the winner, then you would never send a David to fight Goliath because you're going to lose. You can't win the battle. How is David going to kill Goliath? You're just sending him to commit suicide. David said, don't worry. I've killed a lion. I've killed a bear before because God enabled me. And so for some strange reason, they are grieved to a boy who was not even a trained soldier, who was not even in the army, uh, to go and fight Goliath. And then they decided to dress him up, to put the armor of Saul on him. What is that going to do? Now, that one would have finished him because he couldn't even walk properly with the armor. And he said, look, <laughs> let me put down this armor. I can't use this armor at all. So let's understand the logic of the story here. What Israel did not know was that it was God that was involved in all this. In the same way as it is God that is behind this message. This is God that is behind this service. What Israel did not know is that if Israel had chosen a big man, looked for a tall man, looked for some giant or some body of some strength to fight against Goliath, they would have lost. But because they chose a weak boy, because they chose a small boy, because they chose a teenage to fight a seasoned soldier, and he didn't even come with any weapon, he picked up five stones and he had a catapult. That was enough. That was enough to put God on the side of Israel in that battle. And the battle was over in a matter of minutes because the boy just ran forward, put his catapult in, in, the, in the, and he didn't even, it wasn't that he threw one and he missed and then he threw another one and missed and then the third one got there. No. The only place where the man did not have an armor where there was no shield gathering him was where the stone went, straight into his forehead. That was the end of Goliath. This mighty man killed with a string and a stone. 
I was talking to a politician. One of these uh, big politicians in Nigeria, in fact, the APC was founded in his house. And he was, he was telling me about Atiku Abubakar. And in the middle of, it, <clears throat> of the statement, he said, yes, that great man, and I, and I you know, somehow I think, I had to, 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 to ask myself, who is he talking about? He was talking about Atiku Abubakar. And he was calling him a great man. And somehow, you know, I thank God that psychologically, I was just not psychologically attuned to any human being being called great. I was just, you know, Antiku Abaka is a great man. What makes him a great man? So what happened to David? David became celebrated in Israel. Celebrated to such extent that he became a threat to the king and the king was looking out to kill him. Uh, but you know the story. In the end, David became the king of Israel. Okay? Remember, Israel and Judah, everybody was king of, of all the tribes. He became the king of Israel. Now, when David became the king of Israel, something happened. David became Goliath. Please, just, just you, you, you permit me to, to get an understanding of this. Huh? Within the equation of Israel now, there's a sea change in the circumstance of David. He's now the Goliath of Israel. So David, as the Goliath of Israel, now became convinced that he can take the wife of a David in Israel and nothing would happen to him. You understand? This was a man who, there's no question, the hand of God is upon David. I mean, the psalmists have been writing about him that, you know, God is going to establish his throne, all kinds of things are going to happen to him. He ascended to the throne. He was the one that was anointed. He was, he was the youngest in his, in his family. And uh, they, they didn't choose all the other ones. He was the one that was chosen. So God was in him. So this God is with David. And God is with him to such an extent that he didn't only kill Goliath, but now he's the king of Israel. What prevents David from taking a man's wife? He's not a great man, because this is the equation. Okay? A lot of the time, when we are oppressed, we don't want only to be delivered from the oppression. But to really understand that deliverance, we want to become the oppressor. Or we want to become that who is able to be oppressed. I mean, you know, I mean, the, the, the Israelites didn't want to leave Egypt. If God is going to do it to us, for us in Egypt, huh, overthrow the Egyptians and make us the kings of Egypt. And then the Egyptians will be under us. And then we will deal with them. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. We will revenge. We will take, you know, I mean, do whatever we like. But David came to the conclusion that he was now the king. So he took a man's wife. And unfortunately for him, uh, but according to the device of God, because, you know, I mean, you know, that, that incident could have just happened like that. We don't know how often it happened. And nothing would have happened, but no. God made sure that Bathsheba got pregnant. And David now starts to scheme as to how to deceive the husband into thinking that the child is his. I'm not going to the full extent of the story because it's a story that you know. 
I mean, I've been, I, I, I've been in David and Goliath place when I was a kid in Sunday school. Uh, when I was, you know, six, seven years old. It didn't happen to him. In the end, he killed Uriah and took his wife. And then David got into trouble. Because David does not understand something that we need to understand. Let us understand the kingdom dynamics. Huh? God says, the first, no, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Now, let's understand the equation. When the last becomes first, God is no longer on his side. Let's understand it, because God is only on the side of the last. When the last becomes first, God is no longer on the side of the first, unless when the last becomes first, although he is first, he's still operating as last. Now, let me present it in a different context for you. Huh? The slave and the master. Huh? God is on the side of the slave which is what happened in Egypt with the Israelites. But when or if the slave becomes the master, God is not going to change his position because he is the Lord. He doesn't change. He is the God of the slave. He will remain the God of the slave. But the slave has now become the master. So what does the slave that becomes the master need to do? He needs to operate as a in the, in the position of a master as a slave. Otherwise, God is no longer there with him. He's no longer there in his new position. No. If he gets confused and he gets Overtaken by his new status, that's it. He has lost God. God will come and say, when you are little in your sight, this is what I did to you, but you didn't know that you must continue to be little in your sight. And so that's it. That's why David got into trouble. Prophet was sent to him. All kinds of judgment was imposed on David. Huh? David lost his kingdom. Although the Redeemer gave it back to him. He ran out of, he ran out of Jerusalem because his son was going to overthrow him. His concubines were raped in the front of all Israel. The sword never left his house. His children were killing themselves. And the problem of David remains till today. It remains till today. And so let me say one or two things before I go on. Huh? There are so many things that God puts in the flesh. Skills, cunning, craftiness. He places them in the flesh. So, it was God that gave Samson his strength. Huh? But Samson could not really understand his strength. Because if what God gives you is in the flesh, in the final analysis, it is worthless. Jesus says the theme comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Huh? If he, whatever he gives you is in the flesh, it can be stolen, killed, and destroyed. If it's strength, I'm going to lose it. My Tyson cannot fight. <laughs> 
the new Tyson now. Huh? If it is speed, by the time you are 40, you cannot break the world record again. If it is beauty, you're going to get old, no matter how much liposuction and uh, whatever, you know, all these uh, <laughs> facelifts. Huh? There is nothing that God puts in the flesh that's going to last or that is of any value whatsoever. So Samson lost his strength. Huh? Only God I had to save him in the end, but only as a suicide bomber. He brought down the temple, killed more people in his death than in his life, but he killed himself as well. Uh, the same principle pertains to Solomon. Solomon was given wisdom more than anybody else, hmm? but his wisdom was rubbish because his wisdom did not preclude him from marrying 700 wives and having 300 concubines. Just like his father too had wives and concubines all over the place. So in the scriptures, there are two Davids. You will find that the Old Testament was always talking about I'm going to bring a David. I'm going to remove these pastors. And then I'm going to bring a one pastor over there, my servant David. Huh? All the time when the prophets were saying that David was no longer around, it was, it was after David. There are two Davids in the scripture because the second David is Jesus. And so you have two Davids. Now, what interests me about the two Davids and how I often presented them is that there is a David who killed Goliath. And there is a David who was killed by Goliath. There is a David who killed Goliath and a David who didn't kill any Goliath, but in fact was killed by the Goliaths of his time. And the option that we have is to choose between these two David, obviously, you, the obvious choice is that it is Jesus. Huh? It is Jesus who doesn't answer back. It is Jesus who turns the other cheek. It is Jesus who has a sheep before his shearers is dumb. He doesn't open his mouth and he was led to the slaughter. But it was in that weakness that God demonstrated supernatural strength. Because when they killed him, they thought they were ending his ministry. But to my understanding, his crucifixion was his coronation. Because God now raised him from the dead. And he raised him from the dead. Never to die again. He's now the king of kings. All power in heaven and earth has been given to him. What can we learn from Jesus? By strength, no man can prevail. By riches, no man can prevail. By knowledge, no man can prevail. By wisdom, no man can prevail. Man can only be prevailed by God. Uh, the scripture already read, had it not been for the Lord, who is on our side? And so it is only the Lord, it is only the Lord. Uh, he has not put strength in us, he has put it in Christ, as long as we are with Christ, we are strong. So because we are in with Christ, then let the weak say they are strong because of the Lord. 
because of him. And I know there are so many lessons of your life that has been telling you this and you may not have been listening because it took me some time to listen. So many lessons of your life because basically we want to be strong. Basically, we want to be rich. Basically, we want to be promoted. But God is always speaking to us when we will listen that none of these things amount to anything without him. It has to be by him. And the lesson is even more difficult for us because we are the people of God. We are the children of God. So we know that he is our papa. We know that he is on our side. But we cannot assume that he is going to be always on our side. We have to make sure he's always on our side. Let me give you an example that I have given before. God told me to send Femi Kevin to school abroad. It was not my idea. I didn't think about it. It was not, you know, but, you know, I mean, I'm, hallelujah. You want to send him to school abroad? Fantastic. Huh? We found him a Christian school. He had to go and take an exam there. Got to tell him he's going to pass. I told him, I said, I go in there, they're going to, you're going to take an exam. The Lord said, I should tell you, you will pass. He took the exam with the Swedish boy. The Swedish boy failed, he passed. He got into the school. So I knew that it was God. I sent him to school abroad. Except that the God who sent him to school abroad did not send his school fees. Now, this is where the problem now, you know, I mean, so... I, my assumption, my confidence is that God sent him to school abroad. Not to worry about anything. Except that the person who sent him to school abroad did not send the school fees. And I didn't know what you should know now. That if God indeed was the one who sent him to school abroad, and he was the one who sent him to school abroad, then I didn't have to worry about school fees. I'm talking to somebody, somebody, somebody here this morning. I didn't know now, I didn't know then what you should know now. Because somehow I assume that, well, since it was God that says if you go to school abroad, he will now give me the money and I will now pay his school fees. So there will be no problem with his school fees. But he didn't give me the money. And I started having all kinds of problems with his school fees. All sorts of difficulties with the school fees. And you know, you know the, the agreement that I made with God, when he said he was sending him to school, I said, you know, I sending him to school at a very young age, Please, every holiday, he must come back home to Nigeria. Uh, that was the agreement I made with God. Fine. So he will come home, but then how is he going to get back? On one occasion, I kept him home for like two, three weeks after the school started because there was no money to pay the school fees. And then I told God, I said, look, are you the one that said you should go to school or not? Or did I make a mistake? If you are the one, at least send the money for him to even go abroad, go back to school before I will not now deal with the money. The next morning, that was on a Saturday. The next morning, I was going to the prayer room. We still had a prayer room downstairs. God said, go to your office. When I went to my office, the lady came to see me and said, God said, I should give you this. That was the money for the, for the plane ticket. 
And I still, you know, I mean, you know, that was a confirmation. God was confirming it just as he confirmed this service. God was confirming it that I am the one. I'm, okay, you asked for his, you know, I'm, I'm sending him, and I sent him back. And in fact, at that time, I asked for the, the uh, when I asked for the ticket, the amount that was on the on the on the check was 150,000. The ticket was 190 something thousand. When I told Sister Mokwe, he said, you know, this is what you said, one, you know, the, 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 I said, no. The person who gave me 150,000 knows the cost of the ticket. And somebody dropped out from Sabina. And let me got that ticket and went back. Now all the school fees. Palaba don't start again. Palaba don't start again. Look. Every payment of the school fees was a miracle. Every payment. And before the miracle, there was no faith whatsoever. Just anxiety. Just concern. Just letters from the principal. All kinds of things. Were, you know, I mean, it was terrible. Uh, let me do an aside. Because I've told you before that one of the mistakes that I made was when he finished his GCSE, I brought him back to Nigeria. I said, you are not going back. Hmm? I put him in a school, the Ribadu Road. I said, this one, the fees I can pay. Huh? I gave up on God. Hmm? But let me do an aside. The headmaster, who I was always having the ding-dong week about the school fees, wrote to me. I said, this boy is going to fail his GCSE. Because in the mock exams, this is how he did, this is how he did, etc. I was so angry. I wrote him a nasty letter. I said, who are you? Are you God? How can you say he's going to fail? What do you know about anything? Huh? Is it because he's black? I, I, I blasted the man, 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 man kept quiet. When about six weeks, or eight weeks before the result came out, God showed me the result of Femi in a dream. And it was completely different from what the headmaster was saying. He was an A student. Huh? He was an A student. I said, that's an aside. Okay. But I didn't draw all these conclusions. You know, I was able to yap the headmaster that, you know, uh -uh. Who are you to say, you know, but I, I, I didn't yap myself that who are you to think you are the one that is going to pay his fees? I brought him back. Huh? It was a mistake. When I realized that it was a mistake, I had to spend time on my knee before God, knees before God and say, look, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Obviously, we knew this was going to happen. Huh? I, you know, you are the one that is going to pay. You are the, which one is my own? You are the one that sent him now. What am I supposed to do? I don't have to, what money do I have? I don't have any money. I can't do anything. You only want, you know, uh, um, we all said, tell him to apply for university abroad. When he applied, the Lord told me, this is the university that he's going to go to. They're going to take him. Same thing happened. He went to that university and never had a problem of his fees throughout his university period. The problem didn't arise again. Huh? He spent three or four years in the university, no problem with fees. What was the significance of this story? So many years later, God gave me a school. The school is now 12 years old. When he gave me a school, huh, I became the headmaster. You need to understand this story. Huh? I was now the headmaster of a school. And as the headmaster of a school, I have to deal with people that have problems paying their fees. So remember where I started? I said, little David killed Goliath. But David now become Goliath as king of Israel. But he forgot that he was a little David, still in the sight of God. Because, you know, no matter, you can be 60 years old, you can be 70 years old, you are still a child to your, to your mother. 
can still be charged to your parents. They remember, you know, I mean, uh, I got a phone call from Abuja, from Nena, who said, you have to speak to my daughter because she's going to university. I said, oh my God, I know when this, when this girl was born. She's going to university abroad. I spoke to Nenna, I mean, to, to, to Mueli. I said, she said, you know, she's going to university. When I still think of her, I remember when she would talk, 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 you wouldn't understand anything we were saying. Even the mother doesn't know because we were going to be like, but she knew she was saying something, but you couldn't, you couldn't hear anything that she was saying. But now she's going to university. She's going to university. There are so many children that are in the, the, in the, in the Sunday school. They know when they were born. They were born in healing wings. For heaven's sake. The Ukrainians came to see me. I was looking at them. I married them. By the grace of God, it was God that used me. To, to, you know, I, so I, know, I, knew, I knew the parents before the children were born. Anyway, what am I what am I getting at? I was the one that had to deal with the headmaster about fees. Now I'm the headmaster. And as the headmaster, I need, I need to collect fees for the school. People should pay their fees. How can I run the business without fees? You have to be careful. You have to be careful. And I now understood that, okay, <laughs> I didn't know that the God who knows the end from the beginning knew that he was going to give me a school. And he wanted me to understand how it feels not to have enough money to pay to pay for the school fees. So that I would have a simpatico, if you understand the expression. I would have, I would, have, I would have ex exercise compassion. Huh? Because if the landlord has been chasing you for rent, huh? chasing you for rent, and you have been hiding in the wine press, like Gideon, from the landlord. Huh? Don't worry too much about it because <laughs> one day you will become the landlord. You become the landlord. I said, who would have known that route that was begging for gleanings in the field? will become the mama of the house. She will become the madame of the farm. She become the madame. So, <laughs> as headmaster, ah, uh, I, 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 I told Karen, told Chuchu, we first of all have to go to the motherless home and ask them that, Give us five children that will come to Nouveau for free. Just give us, you know, because, I mean, again, you know, I mean, this is, you know, uh, and so, you know, they sent us five children. Uh, at, at different junctures, the children will get, somebody will adopt them. They will say, can we replace them? Replace them. So we're always having five children from the orphanage in Victoria land or in Lekki that are free. All this is coming from my experience of problem of school fees. Huh? There are 20 children in Novo today that don't pay, they don't pay fees. They don't pay fees. And on that basis, I tell God, huh? you must be on the side of Nouveau schools. Yes, you give us the school. We must be on the side of Nouveau schools because we consider the weak. We consider the poor. 
So he gave me a dream in which he showed me in the school full of children. I said, hallelujah. It might not, it might, it might just be a, a spiritual revelation. And there might just be five children still in a class in the school. But I know that in the sight of the Lord, those five children are a crowd. So let me tell you about healing wings. You see, God is the God of the small fellowship. I don't want the God of the ones that are packing in thousands of people. Huh? They don't understand that the same equation arises. The same equation. Huh? The same. That is a reason. Why God? I mean, people have, have people, you know, I mean, we follow like, Told, to, told me, had a dream, and I was preaching to, to thousands of people. I said, you know, it's happening now, now, now. All of you that are here today represent thousands of people because huh, the multiplication that is going to come from you is going to be thousands. It's going to be thousands. You won't know how God is doing it. I said, you know, Jide took me to Washington, D.C., Invited me for a conference that he organized in Washington, D.C. I met a woman. I said, are you from Arabia? I said, yes. He said, ah, we have a big fellowship in London where every week it is your article of faith that we use. That is the basis of it. I said, how will I know this? It was God. I simply trying to tell me that don't, you know, if man looks at the physical things. God sees so much more. So much more. And so the success, the success that we see in the physical is different from the success that God sees. Huh? So let me give you two things that has to do with my experience in Nouveau School. I had a girl last year that is always having a problem with paying our fees. And I said, you know, God, 20 children are enough. Ah, 20 children are enough. And the, 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 the old man will say, uh, it is something, the Barclays Bank is the one that is giving the problem. I said, this man is not telling the truth. I am not telling you the truth. I tell you, we are going to stop this girl from, from coming to, to go, unless you pay. Uh, because once you have fulfilled something with God, you don't know that you, if, I, if, I, if I block the child from coming, God is not going to. Not going to God, yes. Benedict has come again. No. Uh, it's, not, it's, not going to, it's not going to, uh, uh, um, to, to, to chastise me for it. So this dragged on for some time with this girl. And at a certain juncture, I told God, I said, okay, I think that the man is having problems, paying his fees. So I'm going to just tell the, the man, just send him. Doesn't, she doesn't have to pay. I phoned Chuchu. I said, please, send me the man's telephone number. When she sent me the man's telephone number, the man paid. I'm, I'm telling it to you. I'm telling you the ability. So God simply delayed because everything is by contrivance. He delayed and delayed and delayed to see what I would do when, he, when I then decided that, okay, this person, problem is too much. Let him, God made the man pay because he was the one that was withholding it uh, because he wanted to see, I hope you have not settled in complacency in terms of the need to support the weak in terms of the need to support the weak. It, it happened again recently. Uh, uh, one lady that her child is transiting from, uh, from play school to primary school. Part of the fees is 175,000 development levy, which is smaller than most schools put. Most schools put 500,000, we put 175. And the mother said, no, she died 175, she cannot pay it, it's too much, it's social and so, et cetera, you know. 
I said, you know, why can't she not pay the 175? I mean, you know, if she takes her to another school, there's going to be more, much more than that. And then in discussion with Chuchu, I found out the woman is a widow. And that changed the equation. Okay. I said, okay, okay, now I'm in trouble now. If it's a widow, I told myself, I said, okay, uh, I'm going to tell her, forget it, forget, forget the development level. Hmm? Because I would tell her it's because you're a widow, but I know the reason why. But when I said that, uh, she immediately came up with a scheme to pay, to pay it in three installments, and she paid the first installment. So again, God said, you know, I, I always say Abraham did not have to sacrifice his child, but he had sacrificed it. He has sacrificed that child in the way that mattered with God because it is in your mind. So what am I trying to tell you? If you have a lot of money, huh? be poor in the spirit. Don't be poor in your, don't, don't, don't be rich in yourself. Be poor in your mind. Know that it is still God. Huh? So Jesus came. And when this David, who did not kill Goliath, showed up, he was always with sinners. He was always with the riffraffs. And they, people said, ah, what kind of prophet is this? You know, why is he always with these people? When, you know, I mean, how can he be righteous? I mean, he said, you know, Jesus said that the doctor does not come for those who are well. He only comes for the sick. Huh? God comes to heal the sick. When we present to God, we bring to him our weakness. Never come to God with any strength. There are some people in the world, we, we bought some bicycles, they're learning to ride. Some of the children will keep, you know, I can ride now, I can ride now. I say, you, you don't present that to God. Huh? You don't come to God and say, look, look at me, I can now ride my bicycle. No, you come to him and say, I don't know how to ride. You come to him and say, you have to teach me to ride. You come to him and after he even teaches you to ride, you must continue to ride as somebody who does not know how to ride. Because you can easily have an accident. You can easily fall off. But like Israel Polete, you have to now start teaching others to write. Huh? Without saying, ah, look at you. Are you not uh, somewhere and you don't, you don't even know how to write? Look at this one. Oh my shoe. Mm -hmm. You can't do any of that. So back to the matter of today. Jesus has come for us. He has come for us. Why? Because he is the healer of the sick. He's the healer of the sick. Never, ever, ever come to a healing service in healing wings and say you are well. Never ever come to a healing service and say, well, you know, I'm okay. And some people are going, hey, please, don't, don't. You don't know. What do you know? What do you know? There are some sicknesses that lurk, sicknesses that hide. They say the man, you know, he died after a brief illness. He's a lie. The sickness only came out Briefly, but it had been there. It had been there for a while. And that's why we say this is healing wings. Nobody is healed once and for all. Sufficient unto the day is not only the evil, but the healing. 
every day. We come to eat the bread of healing. Jesus said, it is the children's bread. It's a staple diet. And that's why we have come this morning. We have come before the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy in the form of healing. And we're going to ask for the lamp of God to go through us from the top of our head all the way to the sole of our feet. And we're going to ask the good God, the compassionate God, the mighty God, the Lord who heals us, the Lord by whose stripes we are healed, for his glorious power to seek out and search out every stranger of healness that is lurking anywhere in our bone, in our blood, in any tissue of our body, in any muscle of our body, and to expel it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask the Lord. So there are some people that are here that came with some ailments that they know of. Some people seem to be all right. Don't be like you, so I have enough, though. Both categories of people are going to call upon the name of the Lord this morning. And we're going to ask the good God. We're going to ask the only great God. We're going to ask the God who is mighty to save, who is mighty to heal, who is mighty to deliver, huh? whose one touch, just one touch will do the work. I'm going to ask him this morning to do that work in us, individually and collectively. And so we're going to sing. I'm going to ask, uh, uh, where is um, Prince Israel? Are you here? Is Prince here? Yes, I'm yes. Please. They're going to give us one or two praise songs. We're going to, you know, the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. I'm going to give us one or two songs that will bring down the presence of the Lord. And then we're going to ask him to heal us. Please, can you take, can you take one or two songs? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him, and just bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. We are serving him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him, and just bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. Oluwa etobi, etobi yo, etobi. Oluwa etobi. Hetobio, Hetobi, Cosenita le fincha cawereo, Hetobi, Cosenita le fincha cawereo. Hetobi, great are you, Lord. The universe declare your majesty. 
Who can compare? Lord, we search all over. Koseni to dabire. Demons tremble at the mention of your name. Mountains crumble at the sound of your voice. Our battles are won by the power of your mighty hands. We are strong because we have a very big God. Oh, Lua, Hetobi, Hetobi, oh, Hetobi. Oh, Lua, Hetobi, Hetobi, oh, Hetobi. Kosen italifin shakawere, Heto bi halak badainon oho bahiyanu hele dumare aterere kari aye oho lori aye hajubare o kabi o si amen amen and amen just talk to God where you are. Talk to him and say, Lord God Almighty, we are here by appointment. We are here to acknowledge you that indeed you are on our side. We are here because we are of little strength. We are here because we are weak. We are here because we are sick. We are here because we need your touch. We're here, Father Lord, to cash a check from you, knowing that every promise that you have made in your word is fulfilled in Christ. We're here, Father, because we believe you, that there is no sickness that you cannot heal. No sickness. We're here because we know, whether it is cancer, whether it is diabetes, whether it is fibroid, if it has a name, that name and the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every knee of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things under the earth. We're here to proclaim that indeed Jesus <clears throat> is Lord. Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is our God. Jesus is our everlasting Father. We're here because unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. We're here because the Lord God Almighty, the Atere Rekaria, has promised to take sickness away from us. Here because God, our God, our Father, Jehovah, has told us that unto those who fear his name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And so, Lord, Tell him, let your healing come down. The Bible says at the appropriate time, God is going to rain us righteousness on earth. We say, Father Lord, this morning, rain your healing. Let your healing rays be upon us. Let the sun of righteousness shine on us this morning. 
in healing wings to the praise and glory of your name, according to your glorious power. That same power by which you raised our Lord Jesus from the dead. Father, Lord God Almighty, let it animate. Let it energize. Let it quicken every single particle of our bodies. Those that wait upon you. We receive strength from above. Strength from the Lord. For your strength, O oh God, is made perfect in our weakness. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I can see my sister is here today. Thanks a lot. You have, you, you have been away for long. Good morning, sir. Good morning, friend. How are you doing? <laughs> yes, very well. Thank you, sir. Please pray for us. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we 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 bless you. We 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 thank you for this opportunity. Father, we thank you for the service. We thank you for the reminders you sent to us. Father, we thank you because we know that you desire to heal us much more, much, much more, Father, than our desire to be healed. Lord, we activate our faith this morning, O oh God, and we look to you. Father, we will stop looking to others for solution. We will stop looking to man, to doctors, to family, to other people, Father, for healing. Lord, we will look to you, not in a doubtful way, but Father, with everything that we have in us, because you are the, the reason we exist. We, you are the reason we are here. You are the reason we are where we are. Father, we look to you for our healing of our physical bodies, Father God Almighty, of our minds, of our souls, Father God Almighty. We look to you for healing of all sins, Father God Almighty, only especially those known to you, those that we think we have gotten away with. Father, we look to you for healing of our sins, oh God. Lord, we ask that you go and search every single person, oh God, represented here and also virtually here right now. Every Every family represented here, that Father, you begin to search everyone from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet, Father God Almighty, for all sicknesses, oh God, unknown to us, Father, because really there are so many lurking that we do not know of, oh God, and there are many that we know of, but we cannot share. Father God Almighty, you are the one that knows it all. Lord, we ask that you begin to search and begin to heal, begin to shrink all tumors, Father God Almighty, begin to balance out all blood all blood systems father god almighty begin to correct every deformity lord begin to correct father every reproduction system that is not functioning as it is or every organ and tissue lord we ask oh god that you that created us you that made us perfect in your image father come and perfect the healing oh god in our bodies right now in the name of jesus oh god we thank you jehovah because we know that this service Yes, while it talks about physical healing, oh God, the most important thing, Father, is about our spiritual healing, oh God, is about our walk with you, is about our relationship with you, oh God. Lord, for those, oh God, for those of us that may be far away from you, for those of us, Father God Almighty, that are not walking in line with you, Lord, we ask that you heal and restore the relationships, oh God. Every broken relationship here with you, first and foremost, Father, we ask that you restore and you heal in the name of Jesus, that you would draw us back to you, Father God Almighty into your arms, into your bosom, oh God, because that is where we have safety. That is where we have assurance. That is where we have guarantee. That is where we have peace. That is where we have everything that we need, oh God. Father, Lord, even as you're healing our spiritual relationship with you, we ask that every relationship here that is strained, of marriages, Father God Almighty, of parents to their children, oh God, of siblings, oh God, with each other, Father, begin to heal and restore in the name of Jesus, oh God, of friendships that are broken, Father, begin to restore in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we ask, oh God, that you 
that has started this good work, Father, you will perfect it. You will perfect all that concerns us, O oh God, Father. You will perfect all that concerns us. You will fill our mouths with testimonies this week, O oh God. Lord, we will come back next week and say, these are the things that God has done. Because you had, you're not sleeping, O oh God. You're awake, Father God Almighty. And you're walking. You're always walking, Father God Almighty. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for the peace that you have given unto us. We thank you for the confidence we have in you. We thank you, Father God Almighty, for the ability, for the grace you have given us, Father, to be partakers of your kingdom. Lord, we do not take you for granted. We give you glory, Jehovah. We bless your name for that which you have done, Father God Almighty. Indeed, can only be done by you. We give you praise, Jehovah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank God. Thank God. Okay, we have missed you, Pentola. Uh, uh, if you are here this morning and you want God to give you a checkup, put your hand up. You are here because you have come to receive healing from the Lord. Put your hand up quickly, 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 quickly. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are we set? Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. Mr. Obi, please pray for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, we bless you for your goodness. We bless you for your mightiness. We bless you for your diverse provisions, for your children who you define in your son as saint. We thank you for what you obtained for us on the cross, and that is healing. Father, we have presented ourselves to you. You are the God that knows everything about us because in the first place you formed us. We're asking you this morning that whatever is in us, that you didn't put there, that you didn't plant, Father, we're asking you to uproot. Amen. Father, O oh King of glory, as our daughter did earlier present to you, there are diverse issues. There are diverse problems. In the name of sicknesses and diseases, lodged in our spirit man, lodged in our souls, lodged in the visible body. For oh, Father, we're asking you to heal us, to heal us. There are some of us also, the enemy is beginning to put doubts as to what you can do for them. Father, that emotional state, heal us, O oh King of Lord. Heal Amen. us. There are some of us, O oh God, you are building certain things into us that will take us to greatness. But the enemy has been thwarting it, even against our knowledge. Father, heal us in those dimensions. There are people who are operating at the level they shouldn't operate because you have made them bigger. The Gideons amongst us, Father, open yourself to tell them who they are in you. There are also many of us, oh God, who are sick physically. Who do not even know, who can understand where it is emanating from. Father, this morning, we have raised our hands to you. We have presented ourselves. Father, uproot it. Amen. Father, uproot it. There are some of us, oh God, Father Lord, our hearts pant. There are kind of palpitations we receive from our heart. We shouldn't be. A kind of tremble. Father, oh King of glory, uproot it. Amen. Father, oh mighty oh son God, there are enemies, oh God, Father, you are brought in the form of men who stand against the progress of some of us. And because of that, we're having some financial challenges. Father, King of glory, this moment of good search and present us clean, oh God, to receive that which you have provided for us. Father, King of glory, shame to this. Now, some of us, oh King of glory, we are weeping, you know, always urinating. And Father, it is not so, and it shouldn't be so. Father, remove it, O oh King of glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, O oh God, if the enemy is saying that this tissue in our body is weak, 
and bringing in paralysis, which you never order from the beginning. Father, I'm saying, oh God, let everybody be healed. Let everybody, yeah. every tissue, every artery, every vein work normally. Amen. Oh God of glory. Whatever spikes, oh God, Father Lord, the sugar in the blood of men, whatever raises our, our blood pressures, mighty your son God, let them receive the touch of your hand. Amen. Father, King of glory, some of us are being disturbed because of debts we are carrying. Some of us also are being disturbed because of what we are being owed. My dear son, God, your daughter says something about balancing out. Father, balance out this situation. That we pay those who are owing, and those who are owing us, that they pay us. Father, King of glory, this is a moment of your grace. This is a time of your healing. This is a time of favor. And favor is all about we getting things we don't even deserve because it's coming from you. Let every hand raise here receive favor this September in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. We bless you for what we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Put your hands down. We still have some prayer, some prayer points to, to, to make. Let me, I, I wanted to give you a, a testimony. <clears throat> I forgot, but you know, I, I should give it now. So the testimony has to do with myself and cars. You know, uh, <clears throat> I parked my car in, in in front of our building here, and they are building. There's another building the which they were building. That is not completed. Just next to us there, and. Uh, when they were painting it, the wind was blowing the paint <clears throat> onto our side of the building. And so I came in the morning and my car was covered with paint. And this paint had dried on the car. You couldn't even, you know, you, you, you can't, you're trying to get it off. So, before I could complain to whoever it was that was doing the painting, some six, seven people descended on my car and they said, they are sorry, come with top and tying or whatever it is and they have to get rid of that paint. And so they set to work on my car to remove the paint, remove the paint. And when they removed everything, they not only removed the paint that these people have brought from next door, but they removed the paint of the car itself. So uh, uh, those of you that have seen me recently, you will see that the car that I'm driving, it looks very, very funny. <laughs> it looks very strange. It's like, um, a sister of mine came to see me. She bought me a car before, some years ago. And she said, I'm, I'm, coming, to, I'm coming to take your car. I said, what do you mean? I said, uh, I'm, I'm going to take your car and uh, I'll bring it back. And, um, and uh, I would have done the body. I said, no, just leave it, just leave it. There's a, there's a reason why God <laughs> has decided to give me, to, to give me the, to, to, to make sure the paint came off my car is looking, the car looks terrible. You know, so I said, when he is ready for me to, uh, you know, I will do it. I asked, I asked the, the mechanic, how much will it cost to, to redo the body of my car? He said, 200,000. I said, okay, wonderful. All right. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have that 200,000. So I've been driving this car like this for all this year. Uh, several months ago, the car developed another issue, which was smoke. I mean, the smoke that was coming out of the exhaust of the car was incredible. I mean, I would be driving the car. I mean, I, I remember I went somewhere with Modupe. I said, Modupe, how much smoke? He said, the whole place, every, everywhere was full of smoke. I, it, was, it was it's terribly embarrassing. I, I just see smoke coming, you know, white smoke filling everybody. I said, ah. If I was living in England, they would have, they would have, they would have sued me, took, taking me to court or whatever. I said. So I phoned the mechanic again. I said, "Look, please come and inspect this car. Why is this book coming out of the car?" The mechanic, mechanic says that. 
is the engine. You have to change the engine. I said, how much will it cost to change the engine? He said, 487,000. I said, wonderful. 487,000 to change this engine? He said, yes. I said, I will manage this car like that. <laughs> so I've been driving a car with smoke. I said, you know, that's the reproach. Huh? I said, God, when you want me to do something about this car, you will tell me. God is a skipper. Very recently, I just noticed that I wasn't seeing any smoke again. I start the car, I stand beside behind the car, the smoke is not coming out again. The smoke has disappeared. I don't know what it means. I say, God, I know you are the one that is behind this thing. Either these people did some number, I don't know, people know enough about cars, put some strange oil in my car, and then that was bringing the smoke, so I will come and pay nearly 500,000 to change the engine. Or you just decided that, okay, since I didn't care, say reproach, you say, ah, which guy, who is this man? Ah, he's the owner of this school, and he cannot even, he can't have a better car than this. God took away that reproach. And my car isn't smoking again. So I'm not changing no engine. I thank God. It saved me 497000 which I didn't have. You are here this morning. And as an issue of life, something, your car is smoking. The body is bad. So, so, and so is terrible. Something is affecting you. One thing or the other, put up your hand. We are going to pray. There is an issue of life that you want to bring before the Lord God Almighty this morning. Because you know that just one word, just one touch, just one command, and that's it. It's all over. Huh? It's all over. It's the same great and mighty God that we serve. There is nobody, nobody like him. Nobody can be compared to our God. Put up your hand. I want Sister Lambe Atere to pray to pray for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the powerful name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we come before you, Lord, today. We raise our hands, O oh Lord, in supplication to you. My Father, my God, I ask that you meet us as, at our point of need, O oh Lord. Amen. My Father and my God, we do not take the covenant that you have with us for granted, O oh Lord. But our Father and our God, we also take for granted the fact that you are God. You are our Father, and we know the promises you have made to us, O Lord. Father, as we raise our hands today, we ask, O Lord, that you give us life. Amen. Not as the world understands it, O Lord, but what it means to be alive in you. Lord, you know where the shoe is hurting. You know where the shoe is pinching. My Father and my God, I ask that everyone who has put their hands up today, that we'll, nobody will live here the same. Amen. Lord, that we will bring that burden and we will drop it at your feet, O oh Lord. Father, enable us to drop it, O oh Lord. Father, my God, remove every hunch at our backs, O oh Lord. My Father, my God, we want to stand straight, O oh Lord, but tired of bending. No matter what the request is, no matter what the plea is, Lord God Almighty, I ask that every single person here will come alive again. Amen. Lord, whether it be healing, whether it be provision, whether it be promotion, whether it be a new job, whether it be the shelter, whether it be accommodation, whether it be rent, O oh Lord. Father, whether it be finances, O oh Lord. You are, you are, you've been in the business of miracles, O oh Lord. You've been in the business of answering prayers. It's, it, it's not really our concern because we know that if the birds can fly in the sky and they find food to eat and you clothe them, even when it is very cold 
and they do not die, Lord, from the cold. They do not die because it's too hot. Lord, you cover them. How much more us, Lord? And Father, my God, I ask that every single person here who's looking at their bank account and thinking where the next meal will come from, or Lord, those who are do not have enough to pay school fees because our children are going back to school, or those who hide away from their landlords because they do not have the rent to pay. My Father, my God, I ask that you remove shame from us, O Lord. Amen. Father, I ask that you remove weeping and gnashing of teeth, O Lord. My Father, my God, I pray that you replace that with uncommon faith, O Lord. Father, Amen. I ask that you restore our confidence. I ask, O Lord, that you give us that happiness again. Lord, I pray that, that you will set that table in the midst of our friends and our enemies, Lord, whoever they may be. But Lord, you will call us to dine with kings and queens, O Lord. My father, my God, I ask that those who are asking for vehicles, those who cannot afford to put their cars back on the road, those who, who, who have cars that have not, not engines, Lord God Almighty, we tap into the miracle of Brother Obi in our midst, O Lord. And Lord, not long ago, he came and gave us a testimony of how you blessed him with a vehicle. My father, my God, we say you, God of Brother Obi, that you will do it again in our midst, O Lord. Amen. Lord God Almighty, that those who are looking for promotion, those who feel that they, they've been overlooked and they've been on the same grade, been on the same desk, Lord God Almighty, you've given us testimonies here of promotions that were not even asked for. Father Almighty, I ask that again, you will do it again and again and again, oh Lord. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you. Lord, we ask you to heal marriages here. Lord, that if there be any marriage here that is on the brink of collapse, any marriage that is suffering, any marriage that's where they're unhappy, my Father, my God, I ask that you restore peace and put love in their midst, O oh Lord. My Father, my God, I commit all our children into your hands, O oh Lord. All those parents who are battling with one thing or the other, one child or the other, where they're looking to you, where they're fed up, where they're crying and asking what they've done wrong. Lord, give them wisdom. Whisper the right things to them, O oh Lord. Send them help, O oh Lord. My Father, my God, send the parents help, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we commit our children into your hands. Our children are destined for greatness. They're destined for scholarships, O oh Lord. Father, we just want to bless you, O oh Lord, God Almighty. We're taking your love for granted. We're taking your blessings for granted, O oh Lord. My Father, my God, we are saying that, yes, because we know who we have, will rise again, O oh Lord, and we will walk with our confidence intact. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Stay where you are. I'm going to put us in our breakout rooms. I'm going to put us in our breakout rooms. Chuchu, are you ready? Good evening, please. Pardon? Just a minute, please. Okay. You knew you were going to do this, so I don't know why it's taking you so long. I'm ready. Sarah goes with Benedict. Appa and Ugo.
Peninsula and the UQAS. Uzochi and the Adelikis. The gay and Yemisi. Nande and Chuchu. Joseph will be an Ade in Kade Bayo. Tundi Omoya and a his. Comfort Yanda and Dan Karen. Panabas and Samuel Baracha. Festus and Prince Israel. Blessing EA and believe. Mary and Jumi. Kwemi Sola and Imana Lopufu. You have 10 minutes. Benedict Aligbe is with Sarah, Emma.
Emma is with Benedict Alibe. I can't answer any of your questions because I'm not the one organizing this. <laughs> <laughs> 